back to the amp clone. <laughs> Gosh, it really, it really feels like my Plexi. This video is going to be a bit different than all the other Headrush Prime videos you watch today, not just because I'm drinking it, but because the Headrush Prime, the vocal, guitar, effect, processing, Wi-Fi enabled, cloud enabled, streaming music tool with Antares Auto whatever to, I don't care. This pedal board clones amps and that I am very interested in. Well, hello there. Full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video, but Headrush did reach out to me. They said, HW, we have something we think you may be interested in. Can you do a video on it? To which I replied, if you have a capture tech, please send me the unit. I will do a video. I don't accept money for videos, though, and I want you to know that because these are my opinions. I, I don't like working with brands in that way. It's not something I'm interested in doing, but I am very involved in this space and checking out uh, uh, all of these digital things. So in terms of money, I am receiving no compensation for this video. These opinions are all my own, except Headrush did give me the unit and I'm not sending it back. So when I first heard about this unit, obviously to me, the star of the show was the Tone Clone or the Amp Clone. Why didn't they call it Tone Clone? That's such a better name. Whatever, Amp Cloner, uh, I had to know about it, right? So let's do a quick little A-B test. So you come under here uh, in the settings and there's an Amp Cloner. It's got a microphone on an amp and it says, welcome to the Amp Cloner and we can proceed. Now you can do a couple things. You can do Amp Cab, you can do Amp Preamp, you can do Pedal Only. Um, that's awesome because other units let us do that. It's cool. Uh, they put in all that functionality that we find in other ecosystems. Here's a wiring diagram. It's super easy to set up. Once you have the unit plugged in, uh, you just there's a mic input and you use the quarter inch out, send it to the amp. There's a mic input. Now, I, I, there's, there's one XLR um, and, and that's all you need. I, I don't understand why units ever give you more than that. Um, one XLR, I can sum everything and do everything outboard over here. That's what I want to do. I've got my purple plexi up here. I captured the whole thing, but I want to do an A-B test for you. Bass, middle, treble, presence. It tells you to put all of these things. Sorry for the white noise. It's, it's coming from the amp. It tells you to put all of these things, you know, match it to your amp if your bass is up. I'm not doing that, and I probably never will do that because this is not an authentic EQ to what I'm using. So I, I don't have an interest in sort of matching them to know that my mids were up or my treble's down. The values of this EQ are going to be different. So I, I'm happy with them being in the middle, and I, I tend to go for a kind of neutral tone that will work on singles, humbuckers, P90s. So just, just for reference, right now I've got the treble at about six, little above. I've got the mid-range uh, uh, just above eight. I've got my bass, the, cha the channels are jumpered here, so I've got my bass down at, at just below six. I've got the presence almost all the way up. I, I'm not gonna match any of that here. Who cares, start the clone, and it takes about one minute. Five, four, three, two, one, here we go. Let's make a little clone here. <laughs> Cool. Okay, now we can do an A-B test. Here is the target amp. So here's my purple plexi off screen here. And here is the clone. Okay, target amp. Go to the neck humbucker. Let's go to the in-between position. Target amp. to the amp clone. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, I'll be honest, on, on, on this tone sounds pretty close. Um, there's some slight nuances, 
And even sometimes I'm hearing them and then I can't really tell if I'm actually hearing them or not. There's a difference in the amount of noise coming through and so the output's probably changing a little bit and that can really, really confuse you. Back to the amp clone. All right, so that's pretty good. Like that's actually really good. I'll be honest, it's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. Um, now, in, in doing this whole amp, I did about nine captures, nine tone clones or amp clones, and there was a couple of them where I could hear some difference in the presence, but man, this thing, it sounds like the amp. Um, I could do an, I could do a video where it's Tone X versus Quad Cortex versus Head Rush versus all this stuff. I don't enjoy those so much. I know a lot of people do, so I'll probably do it at some point, but man, it sounds like my Purple Plexi and it gives me that feeling. It doesn't feel like its own thing. I'm just, I, I hate comparing this to the Helix, but it, the form factor, it, 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 it's hard not to make the comparison. This thing has a, feel that reminds me of the amp. I don't get that when I tone match. This amp with these clones is now closer than tone matching. I like the screen a lot more. I like, this thing sounds really good out of the box. That's all I'm saying. I might buy one of these. That's kind of my thing, you know, and I'm not trying to put anything down but this capture tech is such a big deal to me. I, I would much rather have it than not have it. But this thing works. Like it really works. And so I'm sort of sitting here going, man, I can't fault this, you know? I, do I think it's in the realm of close enough after you put on some hall reverb? Well, that's actually exactly what I think because if the hall reverb sounds good, which it does here, <laughs> It's just, <laughs> gosh, it really, it really feels like my Plexi. You know, one of the other things I really like about this unit, and I didn't expect it, uh, is the touch screen. Uh, yes, it's a touch screen and it's cool to use. The last unit was a touch screen. The Quad Cortex is a touch screen. But what makes this one pretty unique is that it really does seem kind of high definition. It's touch sensitive. It's responsive. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not quite, you know, my iPad or my Tesla screen. It's, but, but it looks really good. And, and what's cool about it is all of the pedals look like the gear that it's modeling. And there's something really nice about that psychologically, actually. It, it might sound like trivial, but it's actually really nice to be able to look down and see something that looks like a clone, something that looks like a tube screamer, something that looks like a boss, you know, CE1 or a TR2 tremolo. It's this immediate recognition that my brain already knows. I don't have to sort of learn color schemes or color codings or what any little symbols mean. And it's, it's, I don't even have to see it actually written out, clon, K-Drive, it doesn't matter. I can see the clon, I can see the Tube Screamer. Um, and in a weird way, that actually really adds to the experience. I feel a little bit more like I'm playing that gear. I know that doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't change the way the unit sounds, but just from an experience standpoint, from a, from a, from a user experience standpoint, the UI is really just helping me kind of feel more in touch with the thing I'm not really playing, but I'm pretending to be playing. <laughs> Which is, I mean, in a way, that's what this whole thing's about, right? This whole thing is about us pretending to be playing gear that we're not really playing, right? The effects in here, to me, sound better than some of the other units. <coughs> Helix, Helix. No, um, 
It really does. Even some of the stock settings I actually thought were better than than just what you get out of the box. I just pulled up like some Marshalls and stuff, and they sounded really good. Obviously, once I, you know, tone cloned or amp cloned my Purple Plexi, it sounded great. But these effects are really lovely. Um, they're really nice on top. Um, just having the, the, the clon on, you know, sounds really nice. Here's without it. feels like a clone. Tube Screamer, I've got it set pretty warm. This is kind of like my vintage one, you know? That just, that just feels like it. And of course, you know, you put on this little, put on the tremolo. Little second delay, little ambient reverb, a tremolo. Look, I basically just got everything on and there's something here, you know? One thing that is obviously missing to me is some sort of an editor software. I would love it if, you know, similar to the Helix, I could just plug it in and basically use a software version of the Helix, and this is sort of my my uh, software key. I bought this unit, and now I want to use all these um, on my computer and edit it there. That would be really nice. They don't have that, but what they do have is... Uh, basically, you can plug this thing in via USB to your computer and you just get to, you can open it like a hard drive with folders. You can just drag stuff in and then you can just sync it. There's a U uh, USB transfer thing here and you can just sync it. I mean, it's, it's, that's really good. If you're not going to have a software, I like that they've taken the walls down and they've allowed me to have full reign over managing my files. I can drag them in, I can drag them out, I can copy them, I can back them up, and I can keep a sort of backup. Okay, speaking of USB, there's there's the internal stuff saved that you can see in the browser here, but there's also a Dropbox logo. A Dropbox logo! You literally can use a web browser on your mobile device or computer. Please go to this Dropbox thing. You get this code, it expires of this. You can actually store your stuff on a Dropbox to the cloud. So if you're 
not near a computer, you can save your stuff to a Dropbox and sort of sync this up. And then you'll be able to, um, you can activate the device and then that way you don't actually need to plug it into a computer. Now, this is what I like. They're trying to make it so you don't need to plug it into a computer if you don't want to. And I think that's very cool. Using Dropbox to back it up so that even when this unit is full, you have a backup up there, it's easy to do and you're connected to Wi-Fi. That lets you do what other units do, but it also gives you more. You can also plug it in and manage your presets and do that sort of thing. Again, no software, I love to see that. I think the Dropbox thing uh, is super cool. I think that's really awesome. The amp cloner is cool. And then, like I said, there's a bunch of stuff in here I just have no use for. Um, I don't care about, about half the, I don't, look, it's Wi-Fi enabled, that's great. It's cloud enabled. I haven't, we're going to see what's on Headrush Cloud. I hope it's cool. I'll share stuff there. Um, and I'll, of course, have captures. I'm interested in this unit. And that sort of leads me to, um, you know, some of my thoughts. Where does this sit in the whole eco system of modeling? Um, I think it's obvious to say that um, Headrush has been out for a while. They've sold a lot of units, but obviously there's another unit that looks like this that is a bit more popular. Which one would I buy? Which one would I recommend? That's a question I'm always going to get. And like I said, I think the biggest drawback to this unit is you can't plug it into a computer and get all of this beautiful, beautiful graphic representation on your screen. I mentioned earlier that I really love the pedals. I love, I would love to see this on my screen. So to the people at Headrush, please make a desktop version of this so that I can plug it in and edit on there. I really do prefer in a workflow studio like this, like with for my workflow, to put it on the screen. I want to be able to use it there. But aside from that, I actually greatly prefer this to the Helix. Um, the effects are all really good. Um, I'm just going to come out and say that. Like, the overdrives are great. I don't get any of that weird feel that I get on the Helix. The, the notes decay properly, even on the models that are built in here. The capture tech also, for me, solves it. I can go... I don't have to worry about... Headrush building in a, 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 a 68 plexi or a 69 plexi. Is the 69 before the aluminum panel or after and the circuit changes? What about a 71? Is it a 50 watt or a this? What about a PA? What about a super PA? And that's just the marshals, you know? What about all the tweeds? What about all the things? I like variety. And that's why I'm really into amps and I, 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 I do this. Um, I do think it's really cool when people continue to support units, but I, I also think it's cool when the community can just make whatever the heck they want. You also can put pedals on here, which means, you know, I can make 10 bad monkey clones and, you know, give them to the world. And then nobody has to buy that pedal online anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, save yourself $750. Um, I, I need to just come out and say this, and some people might get mad. But if I'm a buyer today, I'm taking this over the Helix. The touchscreen, the capture tech is like just makes this such a much more incredible unit. And then what comes with that capture tech is this Headrush Cloud, look at this. So this is in something they sent me and it says download rigs and clones from other users and artists, which means, okay, um, there's probably gonna be some artist presets involved, upload and share your own rigs and clones. I mean, this is like ToneNet. This is like, uh, you know, uh, a Cortex Cloud. Um, content, constant pool of content from, uh, uh, um, from prime users. I mean, there's, there's always going to be new stuff to download. There's always going to be new things to try and enjoy. And that is, I think really, that's one of the reasons the capture tech is so important. It, it, it brings basically an endless supply of options, tonalities, things to do, try, test out, um, to this this new ecosystem here, um, for me, I'm 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 going to make some of this stuff available. Um, I, I'm going to make uh, presets available um, on Headrush Cloud as soon as it launches. Um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll start an email list and have some stuff you can download. I just did the Purple Plexi. I guess I can put that up there. Um, 
I'm going to be watching this closely to see if this becomes a, um, a unit that really gets, you know, fast adoption. Um, cause I, I think it, it really has the potential to, um, this is, I, I, I take it over Helix. That's for sure. Please don't unsubscribe because I said that I'm HW. <laughs>